after four years, I still like watching League of Legends the most out of everything. You just sit there and you have all the fans there and I'm just the same. I'm like shouting when a pentacle happens. I'm excited when a backdoor happens. And every time that happens, I also still realize, whoa, this is, this is so what I want to do. This is, I can't imagine doing anything else. It's fantastic to be in Belgium. We are in the Abdeten or the Abbey Garden. It's actually one of my favorite places here in Ghent where I went to university. I was very much attracted to the history side of everything. So I decided to do history for four years. Over the course of those four years, I actually discovered that I liked to be a sports reporter a lot more. There was the World Cup, football was on the first year in university. I watched every single game of the football World Cup and that made me really realize, whoa, I love this more than I love anything else. So I also got a degree in journalism. Somehow I fell into watching League of Legends and I stumbled upon a broadcast of IEM. It was kind of like it was oh, an epitome that I was like, watching and I was like, whoa, this is so competitive and cool and this is this game that I've been playing for months and months. I'm gonna try and use what I learned and write about League of Legends. At that point, I had no idea what was about to come. Originally, actually, I never really thought about being on camera. It was never something that I was drawn to. I grew to like being on camera, I think. I have a lot of like mannerisms that I didn't know that I had until I watched myself on camera. When I watch it back then, I just feel like I was very, very awkward and I didn't really know how to present myself. I talk very fast, I still do. I started to like it along the way and now it feels super natural. And it's awesome that now it feels that way, but it wasn't, it wasn't that from the beginning. It sometimes takes a turn for the worse when people judge you on a lot of things that have nothing to do with the actual job description. And the one that hurts the most always is people that are like, the only reason why you're here is because you're a girl and you happen to look half decent. I want to pull that person to the screen and say, have you any idea how hard we all work? And I don't work less hard. Like I do just as much. And you, you just diminish me to just being a lady, a woman, a girl, whatever you want to call it. That is just, ugh. I love when they say, wow, you looked great today. Your dress was awesome. Yay, good. But did you also like that interview? Did you think that I, should I ask that question differently? What should I do? I want someone to watch me and okay, they might think, hey, there's a girl doing interviews, but then I want them to listen and think, wow, okay, she's doing a good job. This is what I wanted to hear from this player. And it's such a process because there's so much more factors that go into it. And the first thing that's important is making the player feel, feel good and feel safe and feel confident to say what he wants to say. A lot of times people always think that, oh, you just burned this player or whatever. But most of the time that's because I've built a connection up with them over the years or I've talked to them behind the scenes and I know how far I can go and I can't go and what would work and sometimes it falls flat but I'd like to think that they respect me now for what I do. I think the most favorite interview that I've done has most recently been the Dyrus interview because it was one of a kind. And I was quite nervous because I had thought about what to ask him and I had different things. Okay, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen to TSM after what's all of this? And then when it just happened, I just realized, no, just let him. He obviously wants to say something and he'll be great at it. So why don't I just give him the openest question possible, sh like show him that he can be calm and be himself. And then I got caught completely off guard. I'm, I'm really sorry to all my fans that I let you down. It was very overwhelming, but the only thing I was like, I don't want to cry and have people look at me when I'm crying. Now, I don't care if I look bad. I want them to listen to him because this is his moment. And I feel like two years ago, I might have screwed that up completely and just been too nervous or said the wrong thing. And I felt really, really happy that I could navigate that and I felt that that moment that we created was really special. 
There is nothing left to say. You have influenced the lives of so many people and you will continue to do that. Thank you so much for willing to do this. And one more time for Dyer's his incredible career and the fact that he was willing to talk to us here. I definitely feel, I know that I'm something that uh, some girls have actually written to me and men as well said, wow, I, I look up to the fact that you're a woman in this business. And it's not something that I want to get hung up on and think about all the time, but I think that through my actions, I've been a, a good example because for me, it's always been about loving this game, working as hard as possible, and hopefully showing people that I care and, and not that I'm there just to be on camera or whatever. As I said, it's great that people say you looked great, you were wearing a great dress, and of course it makes me feel good, but it makes me feel a hundred times better if a girl comes up to me at a live event and says, you are an inspiration to me, I love what you do, I think you're a great example, I want to do what you do. That means so much.